Today we are going cheap. In fact, we are going sub $50 with this B450 AM4-A from AliExpress. And this is from a brand called Machinist. Now when I saw this motherboard, it was coming well under the price of pretty much every other B450 or B550 motherboard on AliExpress. And actually I bought this over a month ago now and the price is still the same. So it doesn't look like it's a flash sale or anything like that. It just looks like this board is constantly coming around $50 and under. But today we're gonna be taking a look at this board, checking out if it can run with say a Ryzen 7 5700X 3D, and we'll also test out a Ryzen 7 3700X. Two CPUs, which I'm very curious about because they are really good value on the AM4 line, not just if you wanna build yourself, a gaming PC on a budget and get really good value for money, but also for me personally, if I'm doing gaming PC flips, I need a CPU and motherboard combo that I can get that's readily available and is good value and I can make a decent buck on. Now at this price point, there are going to be compromises. For instance, packaging this thing, you literally just get a SATA cable, the IO shield and the motherboard with no battery, the circular CR2032 battery that comes inside. Now they have to do this for international shipping purposes because the motherboard could get flagged in some countries and get sent back. So it's understandable why they do this. It's just, you'll have to add in one of these little circular batteries when you get the board in. Though the biggest point of concern for me personally is going to be this VRM, which looks like it's a six phase VRM with no heat sink. And it's going to be obviously on a budget quite inexpensive and use cheaper components. But are those cheaper components going to hold up Let's get into the benchmarking and test this VRM out right now, as well as things like the onboard audio and even the NIC, which things that I am concerned about, and we'll report this to you guys right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor, SCD Keys, has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for Windows 11 Pro 2. Links in the description below. So we tried turning this thing on, first boot it works and we're in the BIOS now and first impressions, kind of surprised. Very simple layout, very easy to use. And we're right here on the XMP profile line here. So we're gonna enable our 3600 megahertz CL16 G skill uh, kit here. And we're also using a Wraith Prism. The reason I'm going with the Wraith Prism is it's kind of like a mix between budget aesthetics, but also it's got a downdraft cooling solution, which should help a little bit on the MOSFETs. I do believe, as you guys have critiqued me in previous uh, budget motherboard reviews, you should you always tell me use a budget downdraft cooler instead of using like a snowman or something like that. So we're gonna try that for today's video. And we're coupling this with an RTX 4090 because people always wanna know, hey, what's the maximum performance differential between this? And is there gonna be any performance hit in relation to this particular motherboard. So locking in that XMP profile, there's also a few other things that I look for here. I like to disable, like, cause I use Windows 10 still, I like to disable this F, uh, TPN uh, garbage and uh, secure boot as well. So I just like my system running clean, no interruptions. And that's exactly the, well, the options are really easy to find here. So that's a pretty good thing so far. Now, one thing I do want to do is I may just uh, fast forward to it. I want to find out where I can perhaps change the um, Infinity fabric speeds. Okay, so infinity fabric and dividers. So naturally when you're going for 16, 3600 megahertz, you want to manually set this to 1800 megahertz. That gives it to like a one to one to one ratio with AM4, which is what you want because the DDR4 is essentially double data. So that's 1800 megahertz at the core as well. So, uh, so we've got 1800 megahertz locked in on the Infinity Fabric. Let's just save and exit and see if that boots to Windows. And then after that, we will uh, then try and take it to 3733 on the DDR4 as well as the Infinity Fabric to 1867. Because that for me is a personal sweet spot with the 5000 series CPUs. All right, so we're in Windows. Everything looks like it's fine here. CPU's booted up okay. 3600 megahertz is locked in. Let's try it now quickly if we can boot in with 
just a slight bump to the memory speeds as well as the Infinity Fabric. So we're now booting up with 3733 and 1867 on the Infinity Fabric and the memory control. Essentially the one to one to one sweet spot that I like with a CPU like the 5700X3D. So that's actually really good news for this motherboard. Now, it was a little bit finicky in the BIOS to get that because they didn't have the option to set in the XMPs and then just try for that little bit of extra boost. You actually had to set in the XMP, save and exit, then go back into the BIOS, disable the XMP and then manually set the frequency and your Infinity Fabric. But it still works. You can still get it to do it. So with that said, let's now get into some stress testing and then some gaming benchmarks with this CPU. And then we'll try out the 3700X and see if that works well, at least on the VRM stress test too. So we've now just finished testing out this board top to bottom and we're back at the verdict bench here with the Machinus B450M. And there is, uh, first of all, we'll point out the negatives because there's not a whole lot, but it's important to get them out of the way with to say, hey, at this sub $50 price point, what is wrong with this thing? And here's where we've got the BIOS not having the option for 5000 series, the curve optimizer, that's just not in the BIOS. I couldn't find it anywhere. But then also with the 3000 series, I just couldn't find the option to do positive and negative like I'm used to. So this BIOS is kind of a little bit limited in that factor, but also another key issue that I came into with both the 5700X3D and the 3700X was that I had to leave the CSM on, that's the compatibility support module. I had to leave that on with the video card, I actually had to leave it in legacy mode, which was its default setting out of the box. It's just usually I turn this off to see if maybe we could get resizable bar or something like that working. But unfortunately, when we turned it off and got into Windows, games started just running like absolute crap. And this was definitely due to that setting. So then when we turned it back to CSM legacy mode, the gaming performance was fixed absolutely. And so the gaming performance was then running like it should. Though speaking of gaming performance, the 5700X3D coupled in with that sweet spot 3733 megahertz DDR4 memory, the G-Skill C16, and then coupled in with that Infinity Fabric at 1867, showed that the performance was not really lagging behind, say, an ASRock B550 motherboard that I would have used in the past, even with resizable bar on in this particular example. So performance is good out of this board. Now also, whilst we were gaming, Actually, we'll talk about the gaming performance. 3700X also ran without any hiccups, and then the Cinebench scores on both these CPUs were fine. Though now it's time to test out everybody's favorite part of a motherboard review, and that is the VRM temperatures. Is this motherboard going to hold up, or is it going to be too toasty to handle? Is it going to cook your breakfast? All those questions, let's get into it. And basically the sad answer is no, it's not gonna cook you breakfast. I mean, maybe it might boil some eggs with the 3700X, which is what we'll start off with. The worst case scenario, 3700X using up a little over 85 watts here, max draw, direct CPU draw. And here's after 10 minutes on this surface temperature, the max temperature we saw was around 82 degrees. The software was reporting it at 81 degrees, but you'll see in a second that this software, we should not rely on this at all because the 5700X3D does have some different results here. And so 82 is not too bad in a 25 cm ambient environment. If you were in a really hot uh, climate, like say you're in Dubai or something like that, and you're in like 40 degrees, yeah, you might wanna start uh, thinking about putting in some kind of a cooling solution on your MOSFETs and trying to lower those temperatures a little bit, because then it'd be going up into say a 100 degree area. So don't want that. but in a 25C ambient environment, which is what I'm used to, it's absolutely fine. Now moving on to the 5700X3D, this uses up about 75 watts max draw, and after 10 minutes we saw a maximum surface temperature here of around 70 degrees. Now here's where the software just said 81 degrees, just like the 3700X. But then I noticed in both scenarios with the Wraith Prism cooler, the 5700X3D and the 3700X both scored around 81 degrees. 
So it's just, this is pretty much just reporting the CPU temperatures, which is supposed to be a motherboard temperature and supposed to report VRM temperatures. But I guess machinist is like, hey, we'll just play it safe. Let's just report CPU temperatures. So people don't see a hundred degrees. Say for instance, people are adding a Ryzen 9 on here, then this thing will go up to a hundred degrees. But for what it's worth, if you're going to go with this motherboard, I'd cap it at a Ryzen 7 3700X or a Ryzen 7 5700X 3D. I wouldn't go any higher than that. And it seems to do the job. Now, when it comes to gaming, it's actually gonna be fine too. The temperatures will be even lower. And here is where in Cyberpunk 2077, we did see a temperature staying under 60 degrees. So when it comes to gaming, gonna be fine. And keep in mind, Cyberpunk 2077, especially with a 3700X and coupled in with a 4090, that's gonna be pretty much maxed on all those CPU cores and threads. So continue on with these numbers. I thought, okay, the VRM is not too shabby, especially for the price. I thought, wow, the onboard audio has got to be complete garbage then, right? Uh, wrong. This is where I was surprised with the onboard audio. It actually did pretty well. Uh, probably some of the best results I've seen for a real cheap banger motherboard. So basically zero to 20 hertz, uh, about five decibels roll off. But then looking at the frequency shake, the frequency response analysis here, it's absolutely fine. It's gonna be fine for real cheap, easy to run headphones or earbuds or something like that. And the crosstalk wasn't too bad either, coming in around minus 86 to minus 87 decibels. Now, of course, the power is not gonna be there, especially versus high-end motherboards. So if you do have hard to run or even medium to run headphones, they will benefit from a separate DAC amp solution. This is just for sort of low entry level headphones that are easy to run. It'll actually do an okay job. Then the last thing to go over is the gigabit ethernet. I did see this in the BIOS. It did say it was GBE, tested it out and the speeds were absolutely fine. So it's got gigabit ethernet on board that actually gives out the proper speeds too. And now with all that info out of the way, it is time to give you guys a conclusion on the Machinist B450 sub $50 motherboard. And what we got right here is actually really good value. Considering the 5700X3D is currently at the price it's at, if you are say building a new PC and you just wanna go with that safe route, you don't wanna get hosed, then you can go with a 5700X3D and a B450 Machinist motherboard and actually have a pretty good combo. Now for me personally, the reason I wanted to check this motherboard out is if I need to flip PCs and say I've got an overstock of GPUs, then I can buy something just quickly, easily. It will take about a week to two weeks to get shipped to me. I do, I do keep that in mind. But if I know I'm gonna run out of motherboards and CPUs and I need something in a pinch, then I wanted to know, is this motherboard going to do the job? And it's actually a really good result here today that it's gonna do the job with those Ryzen 7 CPUs that I featured because both of those are pretty hot CPUs right now in terms of value and of course, ultimately in terms of banging them in a motherboard like this and getting good results, not just for your own personal benefit, but also in terms of flipping gaming PCs. So Machinist motherboard definitely checks out, good job. There are some improvements though. I would like to see a BIOS update, unlocking some of those extra features, especially Ryzen 5000 and the optimization curve because I do like to extract a little bit of extra performance out of my CPUs, especially the X3Ds, and that's the easiest way to do it, but wasn't there unfortunately in that CSM. Maybe look into that and try and get us a resizable bar, if that's a possibility. However, also B450, you won't get PCIe Gen 4. You only get PCIe Gen 3. So that's another drawback. Do keep that in mind. But for what it's worth, 5700X3D, we did test that in Cyberpunk and the results were absolutely fine. There wasn't a huge difference between that and a PCIe Gen 4 motherboard, even with resizable bar enabled. So Gen 3 is still absolutely fine for the current generation graphics cards that we have, even up to a 4090. And so that's about it. I'll put some links in the description below. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button with all that side. I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.